when I read the script, I was very surprised um, to hear about the things that were going on, of, you know, within the hospital, which was to me very interesting. And also the, you know, there's a lot of um, research that's done, which is really, I think, really incredible to watch. If the followers are there or not there, it's not like I've tried to monetize it. I've not tried to like, you know, sell anything yet. I've not, I've not gotten into that space yet. So for me, it's still a very personal thing, and I've not been influenced by social media much yet. Mr. Paresh Rawal and his style of talking, you know, I think he was, uh, he thought I was slightly mental because, I mean, um, every time he spoke, I laughed. Hello and welcome guys, my name is Milan Ismail and today we have gorgeous Tira with us. We're going to see her in Mumbai Diaries 2611. Uh, Tira, I want to start with the trailer itself, alright? I see that we are revisiting the horror, the Mumbai terror attack, right? And we've seen that based on a movie, we've seen a lot of movies, right? But this is a different perspective that we're seeing through the eyes of our medical workers. Uh, tell me, how is it? how do you feel to be a part of such a series where you have to, you know, show your emotional side, the vulnerable side, and we see a totally different perspective from a medical professional. Uh, tell us about that. Hi, Imran. Thank you for having me on the show. Um, yes, uh, Bombay Di Mumbai Diaries is being told from the perspective of the doctors. However, my character is the only character who's outside the hospital. Um, I mean, beside the state department. Yep. Um, I'm an FMB manager at the Palace Hotel. So, um, it's to give you an outside perspective of the terror attacks and I'm in a room which is being uh, which has an event that's felicitating some senior doctors so in spite of, in spite of them being senior and more experienced and older this late 20s banquet manager is having to take control and call the shots mm -hmm. um, so you know that's that's my angle to the story um, I think it's really mm -hmm. nice to tell the story from the side of the medical profession um, because you know I mean I, when I read the script, I was very surprised um, to hear about the things that were going on, of, you know, within the hospital, which is to me very interesting. And also, the, you know, there's a lot of um, research that's done, which is really, I think, really incredible to watch. Um, but yeah, my angle in the story is still from the hotel side. All right. Yeah, we know that you've been, you've been wrestling, you've been wrestling who's in the hotel, you'll be helping yeah. them. So I want to know you, when you do that as an actor, also, you feel a lot of emotions at that time as well, right? So yeah. revisiting such emotions, uh, tell us something about that, going into that emotions. How does it feel to be in that position? As an actor, I know it, uh, it's really impossible to, you know, show out the emotion who are actually over there. But you might have felt something as an actor playing that role. How, how was that like, I know. Well, I went into it uh, armed with the information that I had about the night and about the mindset of the work, of the staff at the hotel, um, about their hiring process, about how their training goes, about how the hospitality industry functions in general, you know, their approach to uh, customers or patrons and, you know, how to deal with uh, irate customers. Um, and then beyond that you know and, and of course the lines and everything but beyond that I kind of allowed myself to improvise on the spot because the situation is such that you know how do you prepare there's no standard operating procedure for what to do at a terrorist attack right so you're kind of like winging it and hoping that you know you're trying to figure out the best option on the spot um so that's how mm -hmm. my preparation went in you know to go in with my prep and then on the spot, see how I would react, you know, because fear is something that you can't prepare for. So, yes, right. my character is vulnerable because she, you know, putting herself in harm's way. Um, she's responsible for all of the lives of, you know, about 100 odd people in her in her banquet hall. Um, and she's, you know, nobody's got answers. You know, we don't know what the management is saying. We don't know what the police are saying. We, you know, with no instructions. So I'm kind of just figuring my way out and so there's no way to prepare for that for that because then it'll look mechanical it'll look staged it's better to go in and feel it on the spot because that's how it'll come out looking more well more genuine or more uh, realistic um and so yeah that it was a mix of both that was my preparation and Nikhil did a fantastic job of creating in an environment that felt very authentic um and so I kind of just uh, absorbed that and just reacted to what was giving given to me as stimuli all right. Did you have a chance to meet uh, who were actually during who were who were actually there in the terror attack? Did you get a chance to interact with such people, or it was pure just what the script said you did it? 
the incident is so huge that there is so much that's written about it. There's so much content on YouTube, you know, people who are survivors, people who are staff, um, there are TED Talks, you know, so there's access to a lot of information. We're living in a time when you can get information um, in any way. And so I consumed all of that. I watched and read as much as I could. And so um, even though I didn't meet them, I knew what they were saying and thinking. Okay, tell me something. As an actor, we acquire a lot of skills, right? Uh, while we're doing the, uh, while we're playing the character and we get into the skin of the character and we, uh, do we apply those skills also in our uh, daily life? Uh, like in real life as well? Or once you're done with the character, you also forget the skill or in somehow the skills come in use in your day-to-day -day life. Does that happen with actors? I think so. I mean, if you're, if there's something like, you know, if you learn how to play an instrument, then that's just going to stay with you. If you learn how to ride a bike, that's going to stay with you. Um, if you're refer referring to Mumbai Diaries, what I did, um, um, what I, my takeaway, let us say, from this is, you know, just how um, strong and how brave and how uh, present, how alert my character is, you know, I mean, she's dealing with these super stressful situations she comes you know she's she's dealing with first she's dealing with irate customers second she's dealing with a terrorist attack and she doesn't crumble at any point you know she's kind of like just even though she's so young she's just able to take control and call the shots um and and uh you know and she's brave enough to find a, an option or a, a plan on her own you know even though she's not been directed um so i think i like those qualities you know i like her bravery bravery i like her strength i like that she doesn't crumble i like that she takes ownership i like her presence of mind all of these qualities are really great to face hardships um and yeah so that's my takeaway there wasn't any specific skill set that i needed to acquire for this specific project but yeah, there are times when you need to do underwater swimming and all of that. And that just stays with you for life. So yeah, those are the perks of the, of the business. Perks of being an actor, right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay, so, but I also wanted to ask you this, you know, when, when we do a series or a movie which is based on real life events, you know, no matter what you do, you might hurt some sentiments. You might hurt some people no matter what, right? And yeah. being through the power of social media, that, that thing becomes a controversy like this. Does it affect you? In any way before choosing a pro uh, project, you know, uh, thinking about what will happen if this happens or that happens, that does it play in back of your mind before taking up a project like this? Well, uh, I haven't experienced that directly, I must say. Uh, my social media blew up with Sense8 and uh, the Sense8 fandom is so loving and so protective that I've only experienced the good side of social media. I've not faced any backlash at all, touch wood, to date. Um, so I have not, ex uh, you know, the, the hatred. So can yeah, touch wood. I am very, I've not experienced the hatred or the criticism that comes. Um, I'm a little terrified of it, but uh, so far I haven't, so I can't say anything. So it's not obviously influenced my decisions on anything because I've not been at the receiving end of anything. Hopefully that won't happen. If it does, then we'll talk. Do actors have to be an influencer, you know, or actors, all they have to do is just act and let their work talk for them. Or does it matter to have like a million followers on their Instagram or social media account? Does it matter in any way, any which ways? Ideally, I think uh, it's not the actor's job to be, uh, well, to have to consider all of these things because, you know, you are, if you think, think about it professionally, uh, the the actor's job is to take the script, to give it life, to give it, you know, uh, to to lift it above, and you know, to do full justice to a character, and you know, so that it's entertaining and that the the director's vision comes through and those things. Um, but I think that because the medium is so strong and powerful and all-reaching, um, it ends up being an added a, a string that you have to kind of pay some attention to because of you know how much people look up to you. Um, so there's some amount of moral and social responsibility that naturally comes, but I feel that that should be there irrespective of your job. You know, I feel like no matter what you're doing with your life, shouldn't mm -hmm. you be morally and socially responsible, especially because morals are completely going out the window right now. Um, so I don't think that that's something I feel as added pressure. I feel like that's something that all of us should do, you know, uh, no matter what our job is. Um, and what was the other aspect of your question? Ha, the number of followers. Well, I have how, am I, how many ever followers I have. Um, I don't, I try very hard. Uh, like I live my life in such a way that I remain completely attached by um, the criticisms with uh, the job. I try and, you know, kind of 
I think my personality is such that I kind of judge everything based on my own understanding of things. I reach mm-hmm. out to the people who matter to me and I ask them for their inputs. Um, but at the end of the day, it has to kind of match with my own perception of things. Um, right. So, you know, if the followers are there or not there, it's not like I've tried to monetize it. I've not tried to like, you know, sell anything yet. I've not, I've not gotten into that space yet. So for me, it's still a very personal thing and I've not been influenced by social media much yet. Let's see. We'll talk in a few years. <laughs> That's a very good way to put it. Okay, let's talk about the cast, the ensemble cast. Such a huge cast, such, such a talented cast, you know. Konkana is there, Mohit is there. You know, what it, what it makes you do, like and as, as an actor, does it push you to perform even more harder because you're, you are going to be in a series where, where you see such great faces and talent, and talent, or, you know, you know, yeah, they're there, even I'm going to do my best and the series is going to do good, or how it works, you know, how, how it works in your head. Well, for me, when I signed on to the project, I was very happy to hear about the names that are associated with it because, you know, as you know, when as an audience, when you're looking at something, you're looking for some sort of relatability in a few names. Um, so I was very happy with the, with the names attached. But right from the word go, I chose a character who's a standalone character. So all the others are at the hospital. I'm the only one in the hotel. So for me, it was, you know. I have to carry the story forward because I'm the hero in this story. Um, so I actually was feeling the weight of, you know, trying to do full justice to keep that angle of the story fully full. Because here, you know, there's there's a there's a different sort of dynamic where everyone's doing something uh, individually and collectively in the hospital. You know, like someone's got their own angle of something going on while they're discussing something with someone else at the hospital. So that's the dynamic within that. But at the hotel, it's just me and my guests. So I had to make sure that um, that remained interesting and that I, I came out, you know, the, the, a very powerful heroic character in isolation. I saw the trailer as well because, and there's a lot of positive things, you know, a lot of positive uh, things are being said on uh, on the comments on the social media about it. Like, even our government, uh, <laughs> government officials are supporting this particular moment, you know, so uh, it encourages you as an actor, right? You see something yeah. good happening, you know. Uh, and I believe this is the best time for you to release this series because we have to give tribute to our unsung heroes, you know, the frontline workers. So yeah. I believe this is the best best time to release this series. But before I let you go, I want to ask you one question that's, uh, that we do something is called rehash, okay? We go back in time and we talk about a character which we like you, like you in, right? So I want to oh, talk about okay. table number 21, uh, okay? Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, <laughs> give me, uh, let's go back in memories and tell me a fondest memory that you have about that particular movie because it's been close to eight years now and it will be nine years next oh year God. yeah oh it's God. eight years yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so tell me about the fondest memory or anything that stayed with you till date and how was the experience working with rajiv and you know can you can you tell us that um i think there are two things that i really uh, uh enjoyed about that one is mr paresh ravel and his style of talking you know i think he was uh, he thought i was slightly mental because i mean um every time he spoke i laughed because mr ravel has the style of talking where he puts in a lot of abuses in his sentence he means it uh, uh, totally for comedy and for entertainment but he has a style of talking where he abuses a lot and i was cracking up because if we, even if he's saying something really simple he'll pepper it with all of these abuses and i was i just i and in hindi it comes out really funny so i was constantly in splits when he was talking if he was saying something serious if he was saying something funny if he was just gen- generally passing a comment i was rolling on the ground so i enjoyed hanging out with him and you know just um uh, absorbing his personality and his outlook towards things um and the other thing i really enjoyed is snooker you know every day after we wrapped shoot we would go downstairs we would hang out we would play snooker i did not know how to play the game at all so they taught me how to place my hand how they you know how much pressure to put what angle all of those Things. So I enjoyed it. We would have dinner while playing it. And, you know, so I've completely forgotten <laughs> how to play it since then. But, you know, that was like our bonding activity. So those are the two, you know, memorable things of the show. And and you also have Rati, too. right, who, is, who, who has such a serious face, but when, while he acts, you know, he goes into it. So tell me something about that. How was it working with him? Well, he's very easygoing. He's not interfering. He never tried. He never tried to direct me. Um, we got along very well. I love his wife. He, she's so funny um and she's very full of life you know and so i'm like you're quite a subdued person and your wife is like this you know this this live wire um so i enjoyed hanging out with her but he's easy to work with you know he um he he's obviously got years of experience and so you know this the 
ease with which he performs is really great. Um, we got along well, which is very important because, you know, we were together in every scene. Um, so, yeah, we were very easy going. Let's just say a very easy going, relaxed dynamic, which I respected a lot. All right. Uh, that that was good rehashing those memories. You know, I was just reliving in my mind right now. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you so yeah. much for talking with me. Yeah. Thank you. I enjoyed chatting and with I you. Did. I hope you watch and enjoy the show. Yes, yes, for sure. Thank you so much. Thank you.